on August 7th, 2007, San Francisco Giants outfielder Barry Bonds hits his 756th career home run, officially breaking Hake Aaron's record for the most home runs all time by any player, making him the new home run king. Despite the controversy shrouding Barry Bonds' career, he's still listed as the king of home runs. And here's his story today on Daily Sports History. Welcome to Daily Sports History. I'm Ethan Reese, your guide to a rapid deep dive into sports history every day. And today's trivia question to listen out for is, why did Barry Bonds decide to go to college? Now to start out with, I know there's controversy. Many people don't consider Barry Bonds the home run king do the, all the steroids, allegations, the stuff with Balco. We've gone over that in a previous episode, and there is a lot behind all that. But he did achieve this moment. And it's interesting to go look back on how he achieved it and what may have changed, what may have caused him to go down a path that tainted his career. So Barry Bonds is the son of former major leaguer Bobby Bonds, who was a three-time All-Star and a member of the San Francisco Giants Wall of Fame. So grew up in baseball, around baseball, but that's not all he did. He actually was a varsity-level athlete in baseball, basketball, and football. But baseball is where he really shined, and he had a 467 batting average his senior year and was named an All-American where he got drafted in the second round in the 1982 Major League Baseball MLB draft by his father's team, the San Francisco Giants. But they were unable to reach contract terms as the max they were going to offer him was 70000 and Bond said he needed seventy five, or else he would attend college. They wouldn't budge, and he went to Arizona State, where he was one of the best college athletes that stepped onto the field that his whole career, hitting as he hit over three forty seven for his career and had 45 home runs. He was a five-tool player for them and helped lead them to the College World Series championship, although this is where his attitude started to become in question. As as many on the team did not like him, they thought he was rude, they thought he was self-centered, he thought he was arrogant. And many didn't even consider him a friend. But Barry just kept focusing on himself, which makes sense if he was self-centered. He would go on to graduate with a degree in criminology, and after his junior year, he would be drafted with the number six pick by the Pittsburgh Pirates in the 1985 draft, where he quickly showed he had an aptitude for hitting and would make his debut the following year on May 30th, 1986, where he would go on to lead all rookies in home runs, all National League rookies in home runs, RBIs, and stolen, base, stolen bases and walks, and finished sixth in Rookie of the Year voting. Now, in the early part of his career, he would actually be the leadoff hitter as he was a five-tool player. He could run and hit not only for power, but was great on getting on base, whether from hits or walks, as he had a great eye for the ball. But this limited him to have more RBIs, and he would later be changed in 1990 to hitting in the middle of the lineup where he had more chance of RBIs. And that's what led to his first MVP in 1990 when he hit 301 with 33 home runs and 114 RBIs, also adding in 52 stolen bases, as well as winning his first gold glove and silver slugger that year. But despite the success, he would constantly be in contract disputes with the Pirates as he wanted to be the highest paid player in the league, and the Pirates did not want to do that. And he made it known that if they wouldn't pay him, he would leave. And despite being a two-time MVP, they let him walk and go on to sign a record deal with his father's team, the San Francisco Giants, signing a $43.7 million contract over six years. And although the Giants had retired to number 24 for Willie Mays, he, he gave permission for Barry to wear it, as Willie Mays was actually Barry Bonds' godfather. But the public condemned this. They hated this possibility. So instead, Barry picked 25, which was his father's number, with the Giants. And Barry was so happy to be with the Giants. He felt like he was back home. This is where he grew up. It was his dream to play where his father played. In that same year, Bobby would actually join the team as a coach. And probably the most unique thing that had ever happened as in 1993, both Barry and Bobby Bonds were ejected from a game being involved in an in-the-field fight with the Colorado Rockies, making it the first time a father and son had been ejected in a game together in, a, in the Major League game. But Barry would continue his success 
from his consecutive MVPs in, with the Pirates, hitting over 336 his first season with 46 home runs and 123 RBIs, winning another MVP. The following year, he finished fourth in MVP voting in a strike shortened where he hit 312 and had 36 home runs, leading the league and led the league with 54 walks. In the 1996 season, he would become the second player to join the 40-40 club, hitting 40 home runs and stealing 40 bases, which had previously only been done by Jose Canseco. And in 1973, his father was one home run away from joining that club. In 1997, he started to drip a little bit, hitting only 291, being the first time he hit under 300 since 1989. Although he did hit 40 home runs that year and drove in 100 and hit over 101 RBIs and still led the league with walks with 145. And despite his low average, he was still able to finish fifth in the MVP voting. And in 1998, he actually had a moment facing the Arizona Diamondbacks where he was the first player since 1941 to be intentionally walked with the bases loaded as they did not want to face his chance at hitting a home run, which would become a common theme throughout the rest of his career. Now in 1999, this was a career low point for Barry Bonds, as this was the first time he suffered a significant injury as he tore a tendon in his bicep, as well as had a bone spur in his elbow, which required surgery, which cost him almost all of April and May that season. And upon returning in June, he struggled with injuries, and it, he struggled to get back to where he was and had nagging injuries in his elbow and knees throughout the season. Now, this is where many think that the steroids, Balco, scandal started around Barry Bonds as he was trying to come back from injury. And this was a very common back in the day that injuries led to this as you wanted to get back on the field as fast as possible. You wouldn't be as strong as you were before. And that's what led a lot of athletes to do this, to get into the steroids game. And they were pretty prominent back in the 90s. You could get steroids if you wanted them. And this is when he really started to look different. His head got a little bit bigger. His body got bigger. And there was lots of speculation around this. But, you know, he had tested, he kept going. And in 2001, he really jumped out of what he had normally done. As he hit his 500th home run in April that year and would go on to break the home run record for a season, hitting 73, breaking Mark McGuire's 70 record set in 1998. Another player who had steroid allegations around him as well. And he did all this despite being 37 years old which is normally when players start to decline their abilities. But despite his age, he had such a great successful season, the Giants gave him a five-year $90 million contract. And though he would not eclipse that 70 home run mark ever again, over the next three seasons, he would hit over 45 home runs. And from 2001 to 2004, he won four consecutive MVPs, becoming the first player to do so, and gave him a record of seven MVPs. For his career but in 2005 he suffered a knee injury and had to have multiple surgeries and missed all but 14 games that year and he came back in 2006 where he broke he passed babe ruth on the home run list and had his sights set to break the all-time record in 2007 the giants were set to make this the last time he would play for the giants as he was 43 and they wanted to allow him the chance to break the record for home runs but they didn't want to pay him anymore and on August 7th, facing against the Washington Nationals, Barry Bonds headed to the plate, going against Mike Batsick. And with a 3-2 count, Barry hit the ball over the right center field bleachers, a 430-foot home run. And everyone was cheering. As when he finished his home run trot, there was a 10-minute delay as there was a brief video con from, from Hank Aaron congratulating Bonds on breaking the record. And Willie Mays even gave a speech as well. But Commissioner Bud Selig was not at the event as in to protest maybe his possible steroid use. And George W. Bush, the president at the time, called Bonds the next day to congratulate him on the honor. And the guy that caught the ball went on to sell the ball at auction for $750,000. That was later bought by the Baseball Hall of Fame so they could have it on display. Now Bonds went on to hit a few more home runs that year, finishing with a 762 career home runs. But after this year, he didn't really want to finish his career but no one wanted to offer him a contract. As he was 43 years old and dealing with previous injuries, the Giants didn't offer him a contract and no other team did. So the following year, he would retire, finishing his career with 14 All-Stars, 7 MVPs, 8 Gold Gloves, 
and be part of the Pittsburgh and Giants Hall of Fame, as well as having his number retired by the San Francisco Giants. And on top of all the home runs, he also holds the record for the most bases on balls with 2,508. Now, I know steroids will always follow Barry Bonds, as that's why he's not in the Hall of Fame at this moment, as if you take that away, he's a surefire Hall of Famer just based off his numbers. But sadly, steroids has followed him around as well as other countless players from the 1990s and the early 2000s. It seems like that has been taken out of the game now, but we can't take away what some of these players did as it was as they were tested and their records still officially stand at the moment. And I want to thank you for listening to today's Daily Sports History. If you like this, please go tell a friend all about it. Send them a DM say, hey, you can be a sports historian just like me. Come back tomorrow for more Daily Sports History. And today's trivia question to listen out for is, why did Barry Bonds decide to go to college? The San Francisco Giants. They were unable to reach contract terms as the max they were going to offer him was 70000 and Bonds said he needed seventy-five, or else he would attend college. They wouldn't budge, and he went to Arizona State.